Hey guys, it's Prophet Janelle now here again, and I just want to stop by and I want to give you um, this word that the Lord had been speaking to me about for a couple of months now, and I've released it to the people in my ministry and also to my family, but I feel and I was led by my leader. She gave me instructions to release it, so I'm going to be obedient and I'm going to release what the Lord has been speaking to me about. So I want to start out with this, guys. Once again, any of my videos, anything that the Lord shares with me, you know, prophetically, I want you guys to know that the prophetic, you know, um, words of foresight, the words that the Lord shows me, things that he shows us, it's not for us to be fearful. It's not for us to go into panic mode. It's not for us to do any of those things. It's for a place of preparation. If you guys watch my other video, I show, I told you guys that, you know, I'm a, I'm a prophet of God. I was born a prophet and God has given me the gift of foresight. And what foresight is, foresight is the ability ability to see into the future and foresight is for three things is for to either to prepare to prevent or for us to pray and so I really want to to give a word of preparation because God has given me this word of preparation so I want to give it to you guys so I want to tell you guys um something that happened to me a couple of months ago I was in my garage and the Lord told me to buy a gas can so I went on Amazon immediately and I bought a gas can and I put the gas can in my trunk and I'm just riding around with a gas can because I'm waiting on further instructions. Because sometimes the Lord will speak like that. You know, he speaks to us in pieces and we have to wait. So I had the gas can in my trunk waiting, with, you know, for what the Lord was going to tell me. And so weeks went by and I hadn't heard anything. And so then I began to really question that I was I hearing the right voice. And then one day I was driving down the street in my neighborhood. And on the side of the road, I saw it had to be in front of one of my neighbor's house. It had to be about nine gas cans bundled up together, just sitting there on the side of the road. Role. And when I tell you guys, I was like, okay, you are truly speaking to me about this thing. And then one day I was in my bathroom and I heard the Lord say that gas was going to go up. But this was right before the whole thing happened with um, OPEC, Russia, and you know Saudi Arabia, the whole falling out thing. So right after he gave me that, that's when the meeting happened, and I saw where you know they 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 couldn't come to agreement, and then they just started continuing to produce the oil, and gas prices went down. And, you know, Trump had the reserve; he was going to fill it up, all that. So gas prices went down. So I was like, okay, Lord, what are you saying? Because I'm hearing one thing, but then I'm seeing something different. But he told me just to keep it. So then. As I went on, I began to really, um, I began to really just, you know, wait on the Lord what he was telling me. And he brought a dream back to me that had had to be about three years ago. And when the, and, and there's specific dreams that the Lord gave me that is like almost as if it's embedded on my in my memory because it's so specific and it's so it's so vivid and I and I and I experienced them in such a way that it's really hard for me to forget because it's just like bam there it is so he gave me this vision about three years ago and I remember I was at the gas station and when I was at the gas station I had you know my kids in the car and all of a sudden these people came up and they had bandanas on their faces tied around their faces and they had gas cans in their hand they began to pour the gas cans on people's cars and inside people cars and then take a lighter and set them on fire and I was just screaming like no 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 guys don't set my car on fire I was trying to get away for them not to set my car on fire and then from there it went and we were driving on the interstate and the same people came and they blocked the interstate to where the cars couldn't move past no further and they blocked the interstate and they began to get the gas cans again and pour it out on people's car get the light get the lighter and set people's car on fire and I was just screaming for them like no 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 don't let don't set my car on fire so the Lord brought that day dream to me and he began to speak to me about inflation he began to speak to me about inflation in another video i told you guys that the, um, what i saw the inflation happening in the black community um that's gonna happen i saw i saw inflation i saw something happening in new york city i saw something like starting in new york city coming out from that place but i definitely saw inflation in the black community so the lord began to speak and i began to ask him for instructions concerning this thing and then um there was another vision that the Lord gave me and I, I'm not going to share the whole vision. I'm going to share a piece of it because this vision is very, um, this is, is I, I need to do like a, a video for this specific vision because it's a lot, but I want to share a piece of it. And a piece of it was, it was, um, it was, it was very dark. It was a dark time. We're times of darkness, right? And this is a, the next place of what God was showing me. But in the vision, um, I went outside and this was after the earthquake and all of that, all after the earth shake and the labor pains. And I went outside and it was 
was so dark outside and people were just running, running. Um, they were running with their suitcases and they were just running on their feet and the gas um, stations were deserted. They were empty. And um, on, on the side of the gas station, a girl dropped to her, to her knees and she just began to repent. But I remember that specific part of the dream that the gas stations were empty. And then another dream that I, the Lord took me into, I also saw was the gas stations, but this time all the gas pumps were taped up with caution signs around them and they were deserted as well. So the Lord was really speaking to me about that. So these are the instructions that I gave to the people in my ministry um, to get gas tanks, get gas cans, not a few, fill them up while the gas is low and store them in a cool, dry place. Every so often, you know, vent the gas or whatever, but those are the instructions that I got from the Lord. And so I just want to, you know, tell you guys, listen, everything, um, God, God gives us things in part, even with, you know, the economy failing. I knew that there was something from, from, an, from the other side of the world that was going to happen drastically that was going to affect our market. And I also saw sickness coming, but I did not intertwine the two together. I did not know they were going to be correlated. So as, as the Lord gives, I, I speak as he speaks as his mouthpiece, we prophesy in part, but I'm speaking as he gives me the utterance to speak. So another part, um, with the gas, so I want to just tell you guys that that's the instruction that he gave me, you know, I'll take my instructions i have my gas there there's something that's going to happen with it major with the gas um so the gas gas industry so i just want you guys to be prepared of that part okay so i also saw where um there was going to be like i kind of want to go okay i'm going to go here first i also saw where there was like a dynamics sh going to shift within the nations as i was praying i began to see like new lines being drawn where we have like we have like um certain um allies in certain countries that you know they, they they share their exports and imports and they trade with each other heavily you know i saw those things changing you know where where you have like the united nations and they have their group you know i see a lot of things that are going to shift and to change even with the way the world operates in the in the allies and you know the, i see that a shift happening there and i want to i want to um share this um scripture that the lord gave me because he took it to me um and he took me to the scripture first samuel chapter um, two, and we're going to start at verse three. And this is Hannah and Hannah is Samuel's mother. And Hannah was barren and, and Eli prophesied over Hannah that she was going to, God was going to give her her desire. And so after she had Samuel, she winked him off the breast. She took him to Eli for him to do the work of the Lord. So, um, I really truly believe that Hannah was prophesying in this in this um, prayer and song that she was singing. And one thing the Lord began to speak to me is he said, daughter, you're about to see the book of Genesis and the book of Revelation come together. I know a lot of people like to take, you know, scriptures from Isaiah and Jeremiah and Revelation in the words of Jesus, you know, to be a prophecy. But the Lord began to show me there are some things in the book of Genesis that's about to meet. And you are about to see them unfold through the book of Revelation. There are some hidden revelation in Genesis that we don't quite understand understand that we are about to see unfold in the book of revelation and i'm seeing that even now and that's why you have to always wait on god for revelation revelation is not something that you can just go to school for and get it's not something that you can study on your own it has to be revealed through god this is not something that i go and i look for god sends me these places he, he, he sets me here and then he begins to open up my eyes so i want to show which i want to share with you first samuel chapter two we're going to start at verse three and it says talk no more so exceedingly proudly let not arrogancy come out of your mouth for the Lord is a God of knowledge and by him actions are weighed. the bows of the mighty men are broken and they that stumble are girded with strength they that were full have hired out themselves for bread and they that were hungry cease so that the barren have born seven and she that have many children is wax feeble the Lord killeth and maketh alive he bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up the Lord maketh poor and maketh rich he bringeth low and lifted up he he raised up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dung kill. I'm going to pause right there for a second because the Lord really began to show me about how he pities the poor. And some of these nations that we see are in poverty right now and they are struggling financially. We are about to see God raise them up. He said, I pity the poor and I will not despise them. We are about to see a major shift. But Hannah here is prophesying, so I'm going to let her prophesy. And it says, and he and let the other beggar from the dunk hill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. 
For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon him. Listen, people of God, I need you guys to understand something. Power belongs to God. This earth belongs to God. The, the economy belongs to God. The people in it belongs to God. The, the, the animals belong to him. The see everything in here belongs to him. Listen, we don't have control over what happens. So the Lord, the Lord began to show me like, listen, I want you to be able to be able to see these things before they happen so that you can speak. And my apostles, um, Priest of Meshes, um, two Sundays ago about the donkey, about Balaam and Balak and about how Balaam's donkey could see so that, so, so then Balaam donkey could speak. And a lot of us are speaking before we can see, we have to begin to see first and then we speak because if we begin to speak out of what we think we know, we will call the debt. We will call it the devil when it's not the devil. And we will call God what it's not like the Pharisees. They said, Oh, you must be prophesying. You must be speaking and doing these things from bells above. And he's like, no, you are blaspheming because you can't see. So you're calling into the devil because you're not, you don't, you're not qualified to see. You're not able, you don't have the revelation. Even though you've read in the Bible and there were scribes and they were, you know, they were learn of the word. But yet when the when the Messiah came, they could not see. It had not been revealed to them. Even though they knew the letter, it, they could not see the revelation of Jesus Christ standing in front of him, the word, the manifested word of God, their savior that they've been reading about for years and years and been learned from a young age, reciting it. They couldn't see it when it was standing in front of them and so a lot of times we have to ask God before we speak on the thing we have to ask him Lord is this you what is this show me what this means because I need to see it before I speak before I call something the devil before I say something is evil before I try to even pray something away I need to know God what do you say about this matter because it may be something that God doesn't want us to pray away it may be something that God just wants us to wait he wants us to prepare he wants us to something to be prevented he wants something for us to be prevented. So I want to just share this. I want to share this with you guys because I see this happening with I see this happening with the oil. I see this happening with the oil. Okay, guys. So the dynamics are, are definitely going to change. They are definitely going to change. We are about to see something break out that has not been broken out before. We are about to see something shift that have not we have not seen shifted before. We are about to see some major dynamics changing even in the oil industry. And I want I want you guys to be aware and don't call it the devil and don't try to pray it away and don't try to say this and don't try to say that because guess what at the end of the day power belongs to God and another thing I want to say to you guys is this the Lord does not show us things for me for us to be fearful and I'm going to keep repeating this thing when the Lord showed me that vision of the sun falling down which represented the economy he said to me he said daughter the children of God have no need to fear in times of of times of darkness we are in times of darkness right now we are in times of darkness and I'm telling you it's not going to go back the way it was and it's not about to get better before it gets better it's going to get worse yes we are going to see um the transfer of wealth coming back to the church. We are going to see um, God's glory come upon the church. We are about to see God's original intent come back to the church. He's going to allow us to have resources, but it's for us to be his hands and feet. Yes, we are going to see that. But before some of that, some of those things happen, we are about to walk through and live out some very tar dark times and some very trying circumstances and situations. I talked about the famine that the Lord showed me in another video. You can go back and look at that one where there's a scarcity of food and a famine that is coming. I saw this is coming. I saw them coming. I saw it. I saw it coming on the young people. I saw it coming. And so I want you guys to know this. Listen, before anything happened, God said he revealed his secrets to his friends. And he before he does anything in earth, he revealed it to his prophets. So there's no need for us to be afraid. No need for us to fear because the Lord will speak these things before they happen. And show us so that we can be in our place and it's not it doesn't catch us off guard. So we have no need to be afraid. Why? Because he said if if he if, if our if his children ask him for bread, he's not gonna give them a stone. If he asks him for meat, he's not gonna give them a serpent. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. David said, I I was young and now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. He said he will supply all of our needs according to who? His riches and glory. He said, Listen, we don't don't take no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow take thought for itself listen we have no need to be afraid we have no need to fear we have no need to be in panic we have no need to hoard you know stuff in our house we have no need to do that but we do want to prepare so as the lord speaks as he utters as he gives instructions we prepare we prepare so people of God, if you would not mind, please share this video. I want it to be obedient and speak on this. So I want you to share this video. Uh, if you could, please like if you would like to subscribe, but definitely share with your family. There are some things that's going to happen. There are some things that's going to shift. There are some things um, even with the oil. 
even um around that area even with russia something is going to shift something is going to shift okay guys so just be prepared that it's coming and god is going to be the one to do it and don't give the devil no glory from this this is not the devil this is the this is the work of the lord and it is marvelous in our sight because God knows the ends from the beginning and guess what all power belongs to God this earth is not ours it belongs to God and what does God want to do concerning these things he gave me this he said hey God too too he, yet in a little while he's going to shake the heavens and shake the earth he's going to shake the sea and the dry land why because he wants to draw all the desires of all nations to come to him he wants the nations to look to him again. He wants not to them to look in the economy or their stocks or the oil or any of those things. He wants us to look to him again. He is our source. He is our protector. He is the one that we should lean on. He is a rock of our salvation. He is the heel that we should look upon. He is it. He is the I am that I am. He's our everything. So I want you guys to be encouraged. And, and again, if you would just like and share, share with your family members, you know, I am being obedient, so I want to give this word out. Um, so just God bless you guys. Stay prayed up. Stay in the place of uh, seclusion. Stay in the place of prayer. Stay in the place of coming to your face, coming on your knees before God, because that's what this time is for. Stay in a place of repentance. It's time for the backsliders to come back. God has allowed this opportunity to come, you know, for him to get our attention. So, you know, if, if you're a backslider, come on, come on in. It's time for you to come back. So I just want to say God bless you guys and you guys have a, a blessed week and stay prayed up. Amen.